the stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, The Man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, we are continuing with our review of the Guardian cards in the revised core set. There are spoilers throughout if you care about that sort of thing. If you enjoy what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Just a quick reminder of how we rate cards here on The Whisper in Darkness. The best of the best get an Elder Sign, while the worst of the worst get an Auto Fail, and the cards in between get a plus one, zero, or Elder Thing, respectively. Cards that are good in one particular investigator or cards that you build around receive a Bless token. Before I get started, I'd like to thank the patrons of this channel for their tremendous support. The Arkham Horror LCG community is amazing, and these people have gone above and beyond to bring you content like these reviews. If you'd like to support the channel's goals and see your name on this list, head over to patreon.com, sign up for a tier of your choice, and claim your rewards. That would be awesome. Without further ado, let's get started. We are back with part two of our review of the Guardian cards in the revised core set. We are going to kick things off with Guard Dog. It is a three cost asset with a combat skill icon, the ally and creature traits. As a response, when an enemy d attack deals damage to Guard Dog, deal one damage to the attacking enemy. Guard Dog has three health and one sanity, and it takes up the uh, ally slot. What do you guys think about everyone's favorite puppy? I have always really liked Guard Dog. I tend to be a very aggressive player in card games, and Guard Dog really facilitates that. You know, you can take attacks of opportunity to play an asset. Like, say you're engaged with a swarm of rats, you play your machete, and then the, the Guard Dog takes the hit and then kills the rats, and then you can continue on with your game plan pretty much unimpeded. And Guard Dog is great for facilitating stuff like that. It's also really nice against Retaliate, and you ultimately end up fighting against the ghoul priest, the guard dog is a ally you may want to have on your side. Any effect that deals actionless damage that doesn't require you to spend an action to deal the damage is pretty good. And guard dog is one of these. And like you said, that's like the perfect situation where you have your guard dog out and that swarm of rats, you don't even spend any time dealing with them. You just you just let Fido deal with the rats and you just continue on your way and that's what Guard Dog is really good for. I don't think Guard Dog does well as like your primary ally because it doesn't boost you all that much, but it's useful as for physical soak and to um, deal actionless damage. Yeah, the ability to to keep on trucking while the Guard Dog handles things like rats is really enables you to j j just keep your pace up which of course is important when the game is a race. There is an upgrade of Guard Dog in the works. It was created at uh, one of the uh, Arkham Horror events uh, that was hosted, I believe, uh, in 2020 when the event was uh, canceled. They, uh, they did it right. online and the uh, community got together and created an upgrade for Guard Dog. Does anybody know happen to know what it does? I if don't I re remember. If I remember correctly, it's about it's either level 2 or 3. I think it's level 3. But the key thing that one does, the upgraded version, if we ever see it, the intention was is that as a free action, you could engage something. and then, But as a result, that thing would then attack the guard dog, which, meant, which would mean that the guard dog would get to bite back. So, interesting. Free engage actions. Yeah, I think the, the biggest strike against the guard dog uh, compared to the beat cop is that lack of a passive skill boost. And, and I think Roland really really wants that between that and his gun he pushes himself up to a six that's going to hit an awful lot of enemies in this game and you really need that toward the end of even a scenario like the gathering i believe the ghoul priest has is it five five uh, fight so you really you really need as many boosts as you can the other uh, issue with the guard dog is that uh, roland isn't much of a tank because he can't really tank the horror. The guard dog can tank the damage, but if you get hit by an enemy that deals damage and horror, Roland would, would have to take the horror. And with only five sanity, he's not going to be willing to do that all that often. I think Skids is actually probably a better choice for the guard dog, simply because he is a, an investigator who just wants to move as fast as possible and, and keep mobile. And so the ability of the guard dog to take out uh, things like rats and then maybe ping some of the bigger enemies, and then Skids also has slightly more sanity than uh, than Roland, so if he does get in a situation where he needs to take the horror, he isn't suddenly on death's doorstep. How would yeah. you uh, rate this one? 
I'm debating on a zero and plus one. It's somewhere, somewhere in that range. It's a solid backup ally for Roland. You know, like we were saying, it it promotes that aggressive play style that you can take advantage of in a solo format. But in multiplayer, I think it loses a little bit of stock because I I do think that you need that static boost from Beat Cop more often than not because you're going to be taking a lot more tests in multiplayer. And that skill boost was really going to help you out there. But in skids, it's actually really good because you can spend two resources and get your free action, then put this down. And then you have the guard dog sort of ready to go when you need to be able to, like, put your machete down and take that rat out and continue on with your turn. Yeah, I agree that I think uh, the guard dog's actually a bit better in skids, at least in the uh, the figurative skids that we illustrated in the skids review, who uh, doesn't want to be making all the combat tests only the ones that really matter so that means skids doesn't isn't totally leaning on the beat cops plus one combat like uh, roland is so i think if you played if you ran guard dog and roland i think it'd be more like never like no, don't run guard dog over beat cop and roland i would say because roland's he makes combat tests that's how he lives and dies that's how he triggers his special ability and guard dog does not help him with those so uh, I'd, I'd rate the guard dog a zero because, you know, it's it's a fine ally. It's good as like a secondary, like your third and f maybe fourth ally slot, but not your primary. Yeah, I think that the guard dog is kind of in an interesting and I, I guess an awkward position in the allies, among the allies in the core set, because uh, you've got on one hand, you've got the beat cop and guardian who is who is clearly better for an investigator like Roland. And then in the rogue card pool, you've got Leo DeLuca, who was an absolute monster in the rogue card pool. And if you compare the guard dog to either of those, he he comes up a little short. Uh, he doesn't have off of the, pa the, pa the passive boost that, uh, that uh, the B cop does. And he certainly does not offer an extra action like uh, Leo does. So I think a, a zero is a, is a good spot for the, uh, the guard dog. I'm not that disappointed when I see him because he's he's at three resources he's he's reasonable and he does have a fair amount of soak and you can uh, dish out um, damage against the smaller enemies with him and then he can uh, as the scenario goes on and if you expect to face you know the big the big bad at the end of the scenario the guard dog is usually dead at that point and so you can you can play a beat cop and then prepare for the final battle. The next card that we are going to look at is Evidence. It is a one cost event with two uh, intellect skill icons. It has the insight trait. It is fast. Play after you defeat an enemy. Discover one clue at your location. It's Roland's triggered ability on a stick, essentially. I think I've said ad nauseum in our reviews at this point that really any card with two matching skill icons is worth looking at at the very least. And Evidence is a really solid card in guardian yeah guardians like uh like defeating enemies roland likes to really likes defeating enemies and uh evidence gives you a you know helps you um complete the scenario when you defeat enemies it's pretty solid yeah yeah the uh the ability just to discover a clue and piggyback that on defeating an enemy is great it generates that action advantage that you're always looking for if Roland is at a two shroud location or at a uh, two uh, a location with two clues, he can between his ability and this, he can uh, soak up those clues pretty easily. Uh, it's nice that uh, Roland and Skids both have enough health that uh, if there is a clue on the table, and you have a fairly low damage enemy on you, you can drag that enemy over to that location, kill it, and then trigger uh, either uh, uh, Roland's ability or the evidence to. Uh, pick up that clue and then if if enemies happen to be scarce uh, those two uh, those two intellect skill icons are absolutely awesome because uh, uh, discovering clues is the name of the game in Arkham Horror and so bumping uh, Roland and Skids up to a five that's going to do you uh, in, pretty well at uh, at all but the highest uh, shroud locations in the game how would you guys uh, rate this one I think for me, this is a very solid plus one. This card really holds up, uh, again, the test of time. A lot of these course, corset cards, I think, hold up pretty well. And evidence is certainly no exception to that rule. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd also give it a plus one because if you're playing a guardian, evidence is um, you want to help the team and you want to be able to actually complete the scenario. And evidence is going to help you do that. And it's going to help you doing that by doing your enemy management already. The only thing about evidence is that it's sometimes hard to line up an evidence with an enemy on your location on a location where that has clues and has a shroud where it's really worth burning evidence. So it's not as solid as working a hunch in Roland because working a hunch just gets it done. But it's it's still like as a guardian, like the more Tesla's clue effects you can pack into your deck, like the better, to be honest. Yeah, I think this is more of a skids card because it's pretty redundant in Roland because Roland is probably realistically only going to defeat one enemy a turn. And while you could essentially grab two clues from defeating one enemy, I don't often see that happening, especially if you mm -hmm. pair him with Daisy. Daisy is probably just going to hoover up all the clues before Roland even really gets much of a chance to do any real major investigating. But two intellect icons, it's solid. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. It does Evidence does have some nuance to it as to uh, whether it's solid. I mean... Like, it's no working a hunch, because working a hunch is just so universal. It just does the thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'd be willing to give this one a, a plus one as well. It is it is very strong, the ability to, to grab that clue. I don't think it holds up as well once your card pool expands, though, because uh, one of the things that has happened over the years is that Guardians have received a lot of cards that allow them to grab Tesla's clues. And... I find that uh, with the with the release of of a card like Scene of the Crime, uh, evidence is making the the cut a lot less uh, in my Guardian decks just because Scene of the Crime does basically the same thing, and you don't need an enemy. Uh, it's it's better if you have an enemy, but you don't need that enemy, which can often be. I know I've often ended up in situations where I've I've got evidence in my hand and no enemy in sight and it's like man i want you know this is really annoying me because i i'm going to hang on to this in hopes of an enemy coming and then eventually it's just like nah screw it i'm just gonna throw this to a to an investigate yeah i think that evidence does lose quite a bit of stock in solo as well because generally you know like you said you're usually like moving to a location investigating and then doing some other action, whether it's moving again or drawing a card or something like that. So evidence can kind of be difficult unless you happen to move as your last action and end up on a location with clues or you somehow fail a bunch of investigates or something like that, which I don't think is realistically going to happen a lot of the time. You draw a fresh enemy off the encounter deck and then you defeat it and get the clue and you can continue moving forward. It's good in those circumstances, but... Like you said, man, from like, there are often times where you're sort of just waiting around for an enemy to show up so that you can play evidence. Yeah, this one's got some nuance. Yeah, I think that's a, you make a really good point there, Nate, that uh, I think if you are playing either Roland, uh, especially Roland, but also Skids, if you do have that evidence, you really want to position, positioning is very important. You want to position yourself at the end of your turn on a location that has a clue just in case you do draw that enemy and then you can kill it and and grab that clue on the next turn because there's there's no worse feeling than when you you've got that evidence in your hand and then realize oh i've already grabbed the clue off this location and my evidence is not going to help me uh, in this particular circumstance so if you're if you're paying attention to your positioning on the board, then you're going to get a lot of value out of evidence. If you're sort of just casually wandering around and not really concerned about where you are, so you can take advantage of it, you're often going to end up pitching this for the the two two skill icons, which are still good, but uh, clues are uh, often better. Yeah, and one other thing to note too is that the game does kind of teach you to not move as your last action as a lot of locations have a when revealed effect whether it's it spawns an enemy engaged with you when you enter the location or it deals you a damage or a horror the game tries to teach you to move then do things and not do things then move so evidence sort of is counterintuitive to that play style another thing about evidence is that it, it definitely is helpful when you're uh, staring down the barrel of a um, cover-up <laughs> you want as many clues as you can get. Well, you don't, a lot, lot of as many clue discoveries as you can get. 
That's right. Cover up. Yeah. yeah. Between Roland's ability, card. between Roland's yeah. ability and this, that's two clues off cover up. That takes a lot of pressure yeah. off, especially if if you happen to draw a cover up late and you're uh, you uh, don't have a ton of time to uh, to clear it. The next card is Dodge. It's a one cost event that has a willpower and agility skill icon. It has the tactic trait. It is fast, and when you you may play it, when an enemy attacks any investigator at your location. You may cancel that attack. When I first started playing Arkham, I really liked dodge. Sort of in the same vein as guard dog, as I tend to play very aggressively. And dodge is another card that facilitates that style. Because you can, you can use it proactively to dodge attacks of opportunity. You can use it proactively to, say, move into a location with an enemy at the end of the end of the round or something and then dodge the attack during enemy phase it is nice in those situations but in solo especially i think oftentimes you're just killing the enemy outright before it even gets the chance to attack you so dodge doesn't really help you out in those circumstances and it also doesn't have two matching skill icons like evidence so yeah that's true dodge um like it's not bad i think it's a fine card it's just um it's one of those things where often if you had a vicious blow instead of dr instead of dodge you could just defeat the enemy instead of ha it sticking around to uh, be dodged one thing that is nice about dodge though is that you can save someone's butt because you can use it on to help out investigators at your location so that bit is nice but still i see what you mean as time goes on you know you you, you kind of need to lean on dodge less and less um, that being said, it's uh, it's fast, so it's not an asset. You know, it doesn't take a lot of re it doesn't take a lot of resources and a lot of time to make use of. So there, it does have that going for it. Yeah, I think the one of the biggest advantages of of dodge is that it does it is a good way to deal with the retaliate keyword, and uh, the ghoul priest does have retaliate. So if you do uh, swing and miss, if you've got dodge in your back pocket, it's nice to be able to cancel that uh, that attack. Or if you get terribly unlucky when you're fighting and say you uh, you end up fighting a four health enemy and you hit the first time and miss the next two times, suddenly you're taking an attack that you weren't expecting and you can prevent it. You can play it against, you know, to prevent attacks against other investigators at your location. I'm not too sure how often that happens considering, you know, most guardians worth their salt will already have engaged those enemies and dealt with them. It's very rare that your seekers or other soft, squishy investigators will be taking those attacks. I think it's worth noting here that the the tactic trait does uh, become more relevant as your card pool grows. Uh, so you uh, once you pick up a, a card like Stick to the Plan from the uh, Black Stars Rise Mythos pack that allows you to stack tactic cards on it, uh, that tactic trait is uh, more relevant. It's also worth noting that there is a level to upgrade for Dodge in the Edge of the Earth Investigator expansion that uh, is a uh, an interesting option for skids since it uh, allows you to uh, to deal a damage when you uh, when you dodge and uh, I think this uh, this card facilitates skids as sort of fast and loose play style where it's like okay i'm just gonna move i'm not gonna care if the enemy attacks me because i'll just dodge it and if you were to upgrade to the level two version you're dodging and then dealing a, a damage so maybe between upgraded dodge and, and guard dog maybe there's something there that uh, you can explore once your uh, card pool expands how would you uh, rate this one and then the core said i'd probably give it a zero it's fine enough and there are times where Maybe you don't kill the ghoul priest in a single turn and it attacks Daisy and you save Daisy's life with it. But I think apart from circumstances like that, you'll you'll play it when you need to like get a weapon down. And you know, it sort of fills a niche every once in a while, but it's not a card um like, you know, ooh, I'm gonna build my deck around dodge. <laughs> yeah, I'd say it's a zero as well, because it is it's fine. It's not particularly excellent. It's not terrible. It's a fine card. Yeah, I th I, I'd agree. It's a zero. It's it's nice to have when you uh, you get attacked, but you know, unless that enemy is dealing a lot of horror, Roland 
he has so much health that that taking an attack is is generally okay um, it is nice to have against retaliate in situations like that i should clarify just uh, the level two upgrade for dodge i did say it was good for skids uh, and that is largely because it does require you to make an agility skill test in order to, do, to deal that damage which of course uh, roland is not going to be doing that uh, very consistently so it's uh, if you are upgrading dodge you're probably playing skids and not roland uh, but yeah it, it's it's a fine card it's it's a card that you'd have in your deck you'll be happy when you need it uh, and if not you commit it to that rotting remains or crypt chill and hope for the best the next card in uh, the box is uh, i think it's one of Matastrophic's favorites this is dynamite blast five cost event with a willpower skill icon tactic trait again choose either your location or a connecting location deal three damage to each enemy and to each investigator at the chosen location interesting to note i don't think i have ever played this card what what is you're a solo player that's why even in solo this card is a lifesaver in certain scenarios yeah. That's that's why this card is so good. It saves your butt. It like turns around a losing uh, board into like a winning board because you can uh, you can set up some big explosions. You can get like a zillion actions worth of uh, effort done just by playing Dynamite Blast. The only problem is when you take a whole bunch of attacks of opportunity, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> thankfully there's an upgraded version that you can you can get if mm -hmm. you expand your card pool. But man. Even just reading this card initially, when you open the box for the first time, you're going to be like, I want to play yeah. this card. <laughs> yeah, this is one of those cards that like makes you feel good to be a guardian. You know, it's like, this is guardians getting things done. You know, if I, I mean, it costs five. It's huge. But you can, you can get a lot done with this. Uh, also, fun trick, if you're Roland, you can blow up something at an adjacent location and discover a clue at your location. There you go. Oh, that's that's, that's cool. some pro play there. <laughs> and yeah, that's what uh, separates the men from the boys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just a sol like you said, it's a really solid card. And for anyone that's an off class guardian, you just have this in your back pocket all the time. And like you said, it just gets so much work done if you're able to set it up properly. Yeah, and it's also um, we were talking earlier about uh, playing from behind. Dynamite Blast can like can just save your butt, like the whole team's butts. Uh, when things are getting really bad yeah <laughs> yeah there are cards in the uh revised core set that are sort of behave as silver bullets for some of the scenarios in the uh, the revised core and i think dynamite blast is one of those for uh, the third scenario in particular uh, i'm not going to spoil it here but there is there are certain situations uh, in that third scenario where a dynamite blast can do an awful lot of work uh, especially if you uh, had a rough time in the second scenario which is often the case for uh, for new players uh, we've already mentioned some of the downsides of dynamite blast uh, those being especially for me that five resource cost that is a, an awful lot for a guardian to uh, to shell out uh, so this is uh, you're probably going to play this in the late game uh, not necessarily early and uh, as Matastrophic mentioned it does provoke attacks of opportunity so while you are dealing damage to enemies uh, you will be taking attacks of opportunity and considering your pro if you're setting this off at your location there's probably a lot of enemies you want to kill and they will all get a chance to kill you first so uh, best to uh, try to get out of there and uh, nuke that site from afar uh, with dynamite blast Nate, you mentioned that there are there is an upgrade. There are actually two upgrades now. We've got the level two upgrade in the Return to the Night of the Zealot box, and then the level three upgrade in the uh, the Nathaniel Cho starter deck. If you're rolling and you've got health to spare, if you're using one of the upgraded Dynamite Blasts, you can just set it off at your location and uh, not worry about being attacked first. So, how would you uh, rate the Dynamite Blast? So you did open up by saying that it's it apparently is one of my favorite cards and i do love it but it is expensive and you do provoke attacks of opportunity using it so i'd give it a plus one it's not an elder sign because you know you're not shielded from your own blast but it's still a plus one because it makes you feel good to be a guardian and it can really save the team yeah i i want to give it a like plus point 
five just because <laughs> just because it's not a card you would play two of it's a it's a very solid one of in a deck because like you said it's expensive it's fairly niche in its effect like you you sort of plan turns around launching dynamite blast rather than it being something like your 45 automatic that you you want to get down as soon as possible and get that thing going but dynamite blast doesn't have that same aspect to it i think i would settle on a zero for this one i i realize that it is extremely good and it does uh there are certain scenarios in the game where where a well-timed dynamite blast can make your life a, a whole lot easier uh, I think I'd probably give it a zero simply because if I drew my opening hand, uh, I would be unhappy to see this card. Uh, it does have one willpower skill icon. Like if it had two willpower skill icons, I'd be all in on this thing. Uh, but just that one willpower skill icon and the and the the cost to me really, uh, I the cost is hard to swallow. Five resources is a lot, and uh, I've done pretty well in the game without ever having to dynamite blast anything. So, yeah, I think I'd settle on a on a zero. Matt is giving me dirty looks. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I uh, actually, what I didn't want to mention was um, so like dynamite blast. You mentioned the stick to the plan, permanent earlier. Dynamite blast is like your ideal stick to the plan. Um, target because it sits there for when you need it. You never draw it in the opening hand. You never draw it instead of something you really want. But it's always there waiting for that one time per game when you really, really need it and it saves the party. The final card that we're going to look at is Vicious Blow. It has a, It is a skill with one combat skill icon practiced. If this skill test is successful during an attack, that attack deals plus one damage. Cards that give bonus damage are exceedingly rare. This is a two of in pretty much every Guardian deck. Under the Sun, practice trait becomes uh, more relevant as the card pool expands, of course. Uh, in particular, practice makes perfect from uh, the Dark Side of the Moon uh, Mythos pack. And there's a level two upgrade if you wanna do even more damage that uh, is in the Lost in Time and Space pack. Or you can wait for the uh, the Dunwich Legacy Investigator expansion, which will be coming out in the new year. Yeah, there really isn't much to say about this card. It's an absolute staple in any combat-oriented Guardian deck. Or even any combat-oriented off-class Guardian deck. Because most off-class Guardians can also take the level 2 version, which is just gravy. I mean, it's, yeah. this is such a good card. Yeah. Just the fact that, um, so this is the answer to that scenario we were talking about all the way back when we were talking about 45 automatic. This is how you um, deal with three health enemies, is you shoot your you shoot your 45 automatic, and you play Vicious Blow, and you deal three damage. So in that regard, it's boosting your combat test, it's saving you an action, because that's another damage you don't have to do, and even more importantly, it's saving you from having to make another successful combat test in order to deal that third damage and get that enemy off the board. And as you've been saying, uh, Mr. Lang, throughout this uh, this whole series, is that the, the game kind of becomes a race. So Vicious Blow is like a nice little warp speed thingy, you know, in order to get you forward in the race. And that makes it like an absolute staple. Yeah. And it saves you the ammo, which is huge. Because that's, an, that's an additional two damage you can do later yeah. down the road. Yeah, I don't think there's much doubt that this one is a this a, this one's an elder sign for me. Well, without oh, yeah. question. And like without you said, question. this yeah. card gets better as you expand your card pool. Not worse. It only gets better. So, just yeah. absolutely yeah. incredible. Yeah, as yeah. the card pool has expanded, three health enemies have uh, become a lot more common. And so having Vicious Blow at your side is uh, is very nice indeed. Uh, the ability to take down enemies quicker means the chance that you get a bad pull from the Chaos Bag and they attack you, uh, you just get to kill them faster. And that's, uh, that's really uh, what it's all about. Yeah, this is a quintessential Guardian card. 
That's going to do it for our look at the second group of cards in the Guardian card pool, uh, mostly events and skills this time around with the uh, the guard tog uh, on top. Uh, any final thoughts? The only thing I wish the revised corset did was print more copies of Vicious Blow. <laughs> two for Roland and two for Skids? I yes. approve. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a lot of the uh, the the events in this uh, in the uh, revised core set are are pretty solid, and uh, I think they make the cut in uh, they still make the cut in in a number of uh, of guardian decks uh, going forward. That's gonna do it for this episode. If you enjoyed what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you need to contact me, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail dot com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.